Hello guys and welcome back to another mCreator tutorial. Today we're going to be covering a little bit more of the variable energy and we're going to be looking at solar panels today. And uh, yeah, so we're going to actually get power into these cables and I'll show you how the cables work as we haven't covered that just yet and I thought adding a solar panel would be a good way to cover how the power actually works. Now, as you can see, we if we right click on the wire itself, we get zero energy out of 200. So 200 is our basically our storage amount. If we right click on the solar panel because it's at the full capacity or basically generating as maximum energy, we can see that it's climbing up and it's about halfway full now. So it's a, it has 6,400 uh, energy out of, or capacity out of uh, basically 4,000 so all right so now there's different modes for the solar panel there is the off state which um, if we just place a block above the solar panel it cannot detect the sky so it's basically going to just per stop production if we turn it on again remove the block then it's going to go to the proper mode uh, there's also different uh, power strengths based on the time of day. So if we go time set uh, 23,000, as you can see, there's only one bar right now. And uh, if we go a little bit further up, so I think it's zero, we get two bars. And if we go 6,000, it will give us the full bars because it's at noon. So and then it will slowly decrease as the time goes over towards uh, sunset. So you'll get a little peak around noon for power and then it'll start to decrease, decrease until the uh, night slowly sets in. And in that, it will turn to <clears throat> the off state, which is basically the night mode for the block. So as you can see on the variable energy, it says uh, solar panel night. And that's basically what mode it's in. So it's just the night mode. It doesn't generate any energy. Well, if we place down a new one, you can see that it doesn't generate any energy. And the other one's already at full capacity, so it doesn't matter. All right, so how does this work with wires? So to demonstrate how it basically works with wires, I've set up a little example. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to find the end of the wire as quickly as possible. But before it does that, it's going to pass it to the input, output, input, output, all the way until it reaches the end of the wire length. Now, as long as the wires are within rendering distance for the player, the power will get to that device. So, if we place down a solar panel, as we can see, it's starting to generate energy. And we'll place down a wire underneath it, and then we'll drop to the bottom. And you can see that it's starting to slowly increase the power for these blocks here. Now this one will start after the uh, wire below it is fully charged, and it'll just keep climbing until it reaches the power source or power generators and it will continue spreading the power um, storing it into the solar panel which will kick in after the wires are fully full so what you would do after that is you would basically hook a device up to the end of the wire and it would basically create a uh, circuit which you could basically use power to do something and the power is being generated by a solar panel which gets pushed into the pipes or the wires, I guess, the cables, and then it can go to your device. So basically that's what it does. It's actually a really simple script to cover. So I'm gonna be covering that today. Let's hop into mCreator and I'll show you how it all works. So you're going to need five different types of blocks for your solar panels. There is the regular solar panel, for when it's on, but it can't find the sky. This is has basically um, textures on the side for determining how much power it has. I've set that to the empty state. And we don't need rotation. We don't 
well, if you're using a model, then you might want to have the block set to cutout, but in most cases you're fine to leave it as solid, so we're just going to leave that. And then what you want to do is set your GUI name, set it to an iron block or whatever your material is for your solar panel, and then put it under the creative tab. In my case, I don't have a creative tab, so I'm just putting it under redstone. And uh, depending on your hardness properties and resistant, you might want to inherit something from a block. Uh, the properties here are for an iron block or a block of ore of some sort. And then you want to set your tool, be able, tool that's able to destroy it. And that's all you really need on this page. Moving over to advanced properties, uh, you need to set the tick rate to one. And you might want to set your top your uh, the block on the map to a specific color. I've set it to blue, which is lapis, because the solar panel top actually is blue and looks very similar to lapis, so I've basically done that. Um, should kind of represent lapis really well. Uh, moving to tile entity, you need to enable this, set the inventory to zero, and disable these two checkboxes right here. Energy and fluid storage, we don't need to use this. And for triggers, we have two trigger or two procedures basically running for one block added and update tick. We'll cover these in just a second. So after you've basically created that, you don't have any generation properties. Uh, let's head over to the other versions, which are pretty much set up the exact same way. So we'll just take a look at the low energy. Now the only difference is we're going to set the texture for the power generated for the low, medium, and high to these ones right here. So this will determine how much power you have. And again, you might want to set your properties, how, uh, the rest of the properties, depending if you're using a custom model or not. And I have set the material and the hardness and resistance to the exact same as the other blocks. The only difference here is we are having it basically um, have no creative inventory, so it doesn't show up in a creative tab, and we're also directing the drop to drop the main solar panel block, which is the off version of the solar panel being on after which we are doing the exact same settings as for the advanced properties. All these settings are exactly the same. Same thing for the tile entity and energy storage we are not using. And we have the same procedures for the, the first block that we basically covered as solar panel block added and solar panel update tick. These are the same procedures that we'll be covering in just a moment. And that's basically exactly the same as your medium, high, and your night version. So we're just going to basically use those settings for these ones right here. So now let's take a look at the solar panel block added and we'll take a look at this script first. So what we're doing here is we're just running it on server side, which is just using an if statement testing if it's not, is not on client side. So provided world remote client side. And this basically just runs it on server side only. And then what we're doing is when the block is added, we're going to set the energy capacity to 6,400. 6, and then we're gonna set the energy send limit to 6,400. Uh, you can set this to zero and it will be able to disable it. I uh, haven't really worked on that system just yet, but uh, we'll be covering that in the future. Um, energy stored, we're gonna set this to zero unless you want it to have a energy already in the block itself. And then you might wanna set this to a higher number up to the energy capacity. And what this will do is basically if you set this anything above zero, then it will basically always have that amount when it's being added. So then what we're doing is we're going to set our variables for our plugs, our energy outputs, and we only have one output for the solar panel, and that is facing downwards. 
So what I've done is I've set the energy plug north, east, south, west up to none. And then what we've done is energy plug down where you've set this to our output uh, direction. So that's basically all that's going on here. If you want those blocks, then you can go under flow control, grab the if statement, go back to logic, grab a not operation. And then what you want to do is go to world data and then scroll down a little bit. And there's one that says is provided world remote. And then there's a uh, couple brackets and it says client side and what this will do is you just basically run it on server side for the other ones you can go to the block procedures scroll down a little bit and then you have the set mbt number tag and then there's the set mbt string tag and then you just want to make sure that the tag name is the same as these ones right here and the values you can set to basically anything these ones require input output or none so the numbers are obviously anywhere from six from any value that you want to set it it's just these ones are very specific on what values they need to be all right so that's basically the just of the variables when we're actually adding the block this happens when the player places it or another block places the block <laughs>
All you need to know is it's testing for the ticks during the time of the day and it's basically set determining if it's night or day. All right, so again, it's down in the description if you want to go and check out that particular video. The other thing is we're just testing if it's not that particular block and obviously then if it's not the solar panel night then we want to set it to night. And that's all that part's doing here. So now let's focus on the actual part up here. So we're testing if the time is equal to or uh, equal to the night hours. And if it is during the night hours and it can see the sky, then we're going to just set the solar panel to night. If it's during the early morning hours, then what we're going to do is run this script, which is going to make sure to set update the block. It's going to keep the MB, keep the state and MBT variables. Uh, these checkboxes are very important for when you're actually carrying over the variables from the other block. If you had this disabled, then it would basically break the system. After which it's going to start generating power uh, or adding power to the internal storage of the block. So what this does is it's going to get the energy stored power plus one, and then it's going to test if it's equal to or less than the energy capacity. So basically it's going to pre-test if the additional one energy, which we'll be adding below, is going to equal or be less than the capacity of the block. If this is true, then what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, set the energy stored plus energy stored plus one. So ener energy stored plus one, and then this will basically just increase it by one value. So this will happen every tick. So every tick there will be an additional one value been, be added. Um, these other blocks down here, uh, again, we're testing for the different uh, time of day. This is for between zero and 3000 ticks, which is kind of an early morning kind of thing. And it will have a chance to generate up to two power Per thing. So exact, exact same procedure system up here. The only difference is we have a else if statement and we're testing if this basically fails, if it can't put a total of plus two in, it's going to try putting a plus one in. And so it's going to try adding one. The first one's obviously going to try adding two at the most. So that's basically that one. And pretty much the exact same system as we just covered up here. The midday one is the exact same thing. The only thing that we're doing is we're testing, we're mainly putting four power in every tick. If that's if that returns false, then we're going to try putting in two. If that returns false, then what we're going to do is we're going to try putting in one. And if, it's, if it can't fit any of those, it's not gonna do anything. And then it's just going to go back to the evening, early evening, and then it's going to put anywhere from two to one in. And then um, almost, I would say dusk would be the version that would be just putting up to one um, power energy in. So this would basically only, this would act as the top one up here, exact same. So it goes one, two, four, two, and one. So that's basically how it works during the day. And now that we got the energy system all set up, so the, the energy system for generating power. We can actually take a look at the rest of the code. So we're just gonna minimize that, open up this one. So what this does is it's basically going to test if the energy capacity is over the amount of, or the energy stored is over the amount. So if it's greater than energy capacity, and if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set energy stored to capacity. So we're basically going to take the capacity amount and put it to energy stored to reset the energy stored capacity to the full amount. Because it's if it's over, then we want to just 
low downgrade it to what the energy the block can actually store so that's all that's doing and then the last part of it is the energy transferring system we've actually covered a lot of this um, in the wire tutorial but I will cover it a little bit more so basically what we're doing here is we're going to test if the energy stored is equal to or pardon me greater than zero and that the block below the solar panel it has a um, energy plug variable up equal to input so basically if the input is facing upwards and then what we're going to do is we're going to set a local variable so our local variable is energy down and what we're going to do is we're going to set energy capacity minus energy storage for the the block below so any device below the block that basically is accepting power so this block right here and if that's true then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the current block has a limit greater than zero if that's also true then what we're going to do is we're going to set the energy uh, basically set the variable our local variable to the energy limit so what this is going to do is we're going to get and local variable if it's greater than energy send limit for the current block then we're going to set the energy or the local variable to energy send limit uh, to the send limit so basically it's going to cap how much we can actually send um, for this variable right here so we've basically just tested if for the amount of power that we can send to fill up the block below and then we're taking that and then we're basically capping it at how much we can actually send with this section right here below that what we're doing is we're basically just determining what version we need to actually send it so if we're actually um, now basically what we're doing here is we're going to test if energy stored is equal to or greater than the energy down and if it if it is equal or greater than the energy down so if this is equal to this or if we have a limit then we're going to be using this equal to this so basically that's why we have the energy limit rate where it is is because we're going to determine if there's an energy limit or not or not beforehand if that's true then what we're going to do is we're going to set the energy for the block below and we're going to send the power that we can actually send to that block below and then we're just going to remove the energy from the current block storage and we're going to do that um, pretty much the same thing for if it is equal to or greater than the energy for that but if it it's less than this number then what we want to do is basically just send all the available energy directly to the block below and if there is and, and basically remove the block the energy from the energy storage so that's basically this so up here we're basically sending power if it's greater than the if the stored power is greater than the amount that we can send or if it's basically um, less than the amount that we can send then we're going to basically just send all of it to the other part so basically that's how all this procedure works it's not too complicated when you actually figure it out again we're using the energy script for from the wires it's pretty much the exact same thing it's just um, more concentrated on for a device that's actually generating power so like I said once you figure this section out here you'll be able to actually create more devices and stuff like wind turbines and all these other fun things which I'll cover in the future um, not too far from now I still have to create some of them but uh, yeah outside of that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I'll see you guys next time 
Thanks for watching. Peace out.